Hello children, welcome to today's English class. Hope you all are safe, healthy and happy at home and are strictly following the guidelines issued regarding the COVID-19 pandemic from time to time. You need to be really careful about your health and strictly follow all the safety measures. Children in the last class, we had learned about Annie Frank's diary. I hope you have also started writing your diary. And you must at least write diary for a week and then try to read that again and again. And also maybe you can read your diary uh, to your family members uh, and share your uh, experiences and emotions with them. Okay, uh, because we had uh, read one particular event uh, that happened in Anne Frank's school uh, in her diary. Okay, and uh, we learn a lot. Diaries also teach us a lot, many a times. Of course, I do understand that uh, many a times you would not wish people to read your diaries. But many a times, diaries are very informative as it happened in the case of Anne Frank. Uh, we discussed about this in detail in the last class. Today, uh, before I move on to the next lesson from your prose text, I would uh, like to ask you a few questions. Now, how do we judge people uh, when you are in your classroom how do you judge your friends how do you make friends do you consider uh, certain points before making friends what are the points you consider before making a true friend do you look at the wealth they possess do you look at the money they have or do you look at their status or is there something very important that you need to look at the qualities they possess or the virtues they possess the values which we need to really learn from each other so this particular lesson which we are going to read today the hundred dresses part one is uh, written by l Bissor Esther. Uh, she talks about her own real life experience. And this particular story talks about a Polish girl. Children, in your prose text, uh, you can read in the introduction, in the before you read part about this particular community. In the 20th century, children, many uh, people from Poland, they migrated to different parts and also to the United States of America. So this particular girl also uh, had migrated along with her parents uh, to America and she studied with other American girls uh, in a particular school. So again, uh, like Anne Frank's diary, this lesson also talks something about uh, the attributes which students must possess and the atmosphere in the classroom and in the school. Children, have you heard about the word bullying? You must have definitely heard. And you must have also heard this particular word uh, in, uh, on the television, uh, in the radio and also must have read about this particular act in the newspapers also. You are very familiar with this term because many of you also involve yourself in bullying which is not at all good. Maybe sometimes you do uh, unintentionally but that is uh, again wrong because uh, let me tell you what is bullying exactly it is whenever somebody uses their courage or power to threaten people particularly threaten the weaker people isn't it sometimes in the classrooms we do that 
you form a group of students who consider that they are very powerful, they are very courageous and you try to bully other students whom you consider as weak. You know, you make fun of them, maybe about their physical appearance, about their status, about the way they walk, about the way they talk, about the way they read in the class or respond in the class. Okay, without knowing that, the consequences of this way of bullying could be very serious. Many a times children, because of bullying, many children commit suicide or many children, uh, you know, become depressed. They go into depression, which is a very serious health concern. It could affect the student for uh, his life, throughout his life. Okay, so we are going to uh, learn a lot from this particular story, which is really touching. Children, it talks about discrimination. You might remember when we had uh, studied the chapter A Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela. The role of Nelson Mandela in uh, fighting against racial discrimination. I hope you remember the story. Okay? And if you have the habit of watching news, which is very important for you. And you must remember in all the classes I keep telling you, as far as language learning is concerned, you must read newspapers, you must watch news, particularly if you want to improve your language command in English. So you have to watch English news and update yourself with what is happening around the world. So when we read about uh, the contribution of Nelson Mandela and many other black leaders like Martin Luther, okay, in the past and now also when we see in many parts, especially the recent incidents of racial discrimination in America, you might have definitely watched in the news. Okay, the recent violence that happened in America. Okay, even after so many years of freedom of the blacks, still they are being discriminated. So we need to really come out of this. We must do away with all sorts of discrimination whether it is uh, racial discrimination or discrimination on the basis of uh, being rich or poor or discrimination in the name of religion, language, social status, we are not supposed to do because we all are born equal. So children, before we move on to today's lesson, I would like to uh, tell you something about the characters of the story. Okay, once we understand the characters, then it will be easy for us to understand the story. So, let's move to the characters. Now, Wanda, Petronsky, Peggy and Maddie. So, these are the three main characters of this particular story. Now, Wanda, Petronsky, as I told you, she was a Polish girl she was poor and she sat in the last row of the class Peggy made fun of her but she did not react she spoke very less she was very quiet silent she did not have any friends she came to school alone and went back home alone she wore a faded blue dress. As she was poor, she always wore this particular faded dress, which means uh, the dress was very dull. Now, this is about Wanda Petronsky. Now Peggy. Peggy was 
rich, she was pretty, she had curly hair and she was the most popular girl in the school. She was not cruel. She loved animals. In fact, whenever she saw any cruelty against animals, she cried a lot. Okay. She protected small children from bullies. That means she did not like bullying. She used to tease Wanda for fun. When we read the lesson, we'll come to know that uh, Peggy used to make fun of Wanda. She used to tease her, but that was not intentionally. Okay. Now let's look at Maddie. Okay. Now Maddie was also poor. She wore dresses given by Peggy. Okay. She was concerned about Wanda and she did not like Peggy asking questions about Wanda's dresses, hat and shoes. Okay, children. So, Maddie was also poor, but she possessed qualities like, you know, being concerned of each other. But she did not like people teasing or bullying each other. And she did not like Peggy asking questions to Wanda about her dresses, about her hat or about her shoes. Okay. So children, I think you have become familiar with the three main characters of the story. Uh, Wanda, Petronsky, uh, Peggy and Maddie. Now let's move on to the lesson, the 100 dresses part one. Please look at the screen very carefully and you can also uh, look into your textbook if you have one. And also please listen carefully to the explanations which I make while uh, interacting with you so that you can understand the lesson very well. The 100 Dresses Part 1 by L. Vassar Esther. Children, as I told you, it is the writer's real life experience. Today, Monday, Wanda Petronsky was not in her seat. But nobody, not even Peggy and uh, Madeline, the girls who started all the fun, noticed her absence. Usually Wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in room 13. She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat. The corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet, most roars of laughter when anything funny was said and most mud and dirt on the floor. Here scuffling of feet means noisy or dragging movements of the feet on the ground. Now it was Monday and Wanda was not in her seat. So uh, here uh, is a brief description of uh, the particular seat she occupied in the class. Okay, and that particular day when she was not there in the class, no one noticed, not even Peggy and Maddie. The girls who were responsible uh, and who had made fun of Wanda. Okay, so they too did not notice that she was not there in the class on that particular Monday. So usually Wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in room number 13. That was their class. She sat in the last row and in the corner of the room where rough boys, means the boys who are very naughty and uh, who keep uh, making a lot of noise in the class, right? And the corner of the room, uh, where most scuffling of feet, tamping of feet, whenever something uh, funny uh, was there in the class. So that was the place from where the boys tapped their feet and made a lot of noise. And even they used to burst into laughter. 
So, uh, the backbenchers, as we often say. Okay, so the boys laughed loudly, they uh, tapped their feet very loudly whenever uh, something went wrong or whenever uh, something funny was there in the class. Okay, and there was also mud on the floor. Why there was mud on the floor? Let's look at the next para. Wanda did not sit there because she was rough and noisy. Because it was said that the boys made lot of noise. They disturbed the class. Okay, but Wanda was not a girl of that kind. But still she sat in the last row. Uh, why? And she was very quiet. And she spoke very less. Okay, and nobody ever heard uh, her laugh. Okay, nobody heard uh, her laugh loudly. Sometimes she twisted her mouth into a crooked sort of smile, but that was all. Okay, now nobody knew exactly why Wanda sat in that seat. Unless it was because she came all the way from Boggins Heights and her feet were usually caked with dry mud. But no one really thought much about Wanda Petronsky once she sat in that corner of the room. So it is because she came from a particular area, uh, Boggins Heights, uh, the area where uh, poor people lived and the area was very muddy that's why uh, when she came from there uh, her shoes were uh, filled with mud and that's why she preferred sitting in the last row okay uh, like even in India we have many slum areas uh, which are not very clean which are uh, really muddy okay now Maybe that was the reason why she preferred sitting in the last bench. Okay. Now the time when they thought about Wanda was outside of school hours. At noon time when they were coming back to school or in the morning early before school began. When groups of two or three or even more would be talking and laughing on their way to the schoolyard. Then sometimes they waited for Wanda to have fun with her. Children, as we saw in the first paragraph, you know, even Peggy and Maddie did not notice her when she was inside the class. But they were uh, very much interested in talking to her after the class in the schoolyard and after school hours. So, they used to be in groups of two or three and as we read that Wanda came to school alone and she also went back home alone. She did not have any friends. So usually when she used to go to school or she used to come back from school, these girls used to wait for her and made fun of her. Now the next day, that was Tuesday, Wanda was not in school either. Monday she was not there in the school. Tuesday also she was not there in the school. And nobody noticed her absence as usual. But on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie who sat down front with other children who got good marks and who did not track uh, in a whole lot of mud did notice that Wanda wasn't there. Peggy was the most popular girl in school. She was pretty. She had many pretty clothes and her hair was curly. Maddie was her closest friend. The reason uh, Peggy and Maddie noticed Wanda's absence was because uh, Wanda had made them late to school. They had waited and waited for Wanda to have some fun with her. Wanda Petronsky most of the children in room 13 didn't have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Alan. 
there was one boy named Bounce, Willie Bounce, and people thought that was funny. But not funny in the same way that Petronsky was. Now children, when Wanda did not uh, come to school on Tuesday, nobody noticed that. But when she did not come to school on Wednesday also, Peggy and Maddie, uh, who used to sit in the front row with children who got good marks, they noticed uh, the absence of Wanda on the third day. Okay? Now, Wanda wasn't there. As I had told you in the beginning about Peggy, she was rich and she was pretty. She had curly hair and she also had pretty clothes. Okay. And Maddie was her closest friend. I had told you about Maddie also. She was also poor and she used to wear clothes given by uh, Peggy. Okay, why did they get late? Because of Wanda? Because we had read children that they used to wait for her while going to school and also while coming back from school. So they waited for Wanda to make fun of her. They waited and waited and waited and Wanda did not turn up. So they got late for school. That is how they noticed that Wanda was not there in the class. Now, Wanda Petronsky. Uh, does, does the name sound strange to you children? It sounded strange to the children in the class in America. Peggy and Maddie and the other friends of the school where Wanda studied found her name very strange because they had uh, names like uh, Thomas or Smith or Allen in the class which were very common. But Wanda Petronsky sounded strange to them and that was enough for them to make fun of her name also. There was one particular boy named Willie Bounce but that name did not sound as strange as Wanda Petronsky. Okay, so they made fun of her name also. Now, as I had told you in the beginning, Wanda didn't have any friends. She came to school alone and went home alone. She always wore a faded blue dress that didn't hang right. Hang right means that did not fit her properly. It was clean, but it looked as though uh, it had never been uh, ironed properly. She did not have any friends, but a lot of girls talked to her. They were more interested in her. Sometimes they surrounded her in the schoolyard as she stood watching the little girls play hopscotch on the worn hard ground. Here hopscotch means it's a game uh, in which children hop into and over uh, squares marked on the ground. You might have also played this uh, games when you were uh, small children. And maybe you might be playing that now also. Some traditional games are popular even today. Even I used to play this game when we were in school. It's really interesting. So when girls used to play this particular game, hopscotch, uh, Wanda used to stand there and watch them. And that was the time when other girls caught hold of her and they used all the opportunities to make fun of her. Okay? Wanda, Piggy would say in a most courteous manner, as though she were talking to Miss Mason. Miss Mason was their teacher. Wanda, she would say, giving one of her friends a nudge. Tell us how many dresses did you say you had hanging up in your closet? A hundred, Wanda would say. A hundred? 
exclaimed all the little girls incredulously and the little ones would stop playing hopscotch and listen. Ye, a hundred, all lined up, said Wanda. Okay, now Wanda was questioned by Peggy in a courteous manner. Children bullying in a courteous manner. That is also not good because it hurts children. So she would ask her, how many dresses do you have hanging in your closet? And she would also keep pushing one of her friends. And to this, Wanda would very gently reply, a hundred. Though she did not have hundred dresses children. We had seen that she had only one uh, blue faded dress. But every time uh, Peggy asked her about the number of dresses she had, just to make fun of her, though uh, Peggy also knew that she had only one faded blue dress and that she was very poor. But still she used to ask her this question. And Wanda would very coolly reply, a hundred. This used to surprise all the other girls. It was unbelievable for them. And then again, she used to stress her answer. Yeah, a hundred and all the dresses lined up. Okay. So Peggy made fun of her and asked about her dresses knowingly. Though we had seen that she was not cruel and she did not intentionally ask all these questions. But she got irritated when Wanda said that she had 100 dresses. She thought Wanda was lying and she did not like that answer. So children, today we'll stop here. In the next class, we'll continue this lesson. But I would like you to read the lesson very carefully again, line by line, and try to understand the characters and try to understand the message that the story is trying to give us. And you must also read the before you read section of your text to understand about the Polish community, people of Poland. You can even search on the net, okay? And you can also search on the net about uh, the various discrimination faced by uh, the blacks and also uh, by the Polish people so that you understand the chapter well. So children, see you in the next class. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay at home.